You're in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, and we're talking Cincinnati Bengals draft history. Now, in today's format, like we talked about, first round is day one, rounds two and three are day two. Day three, rounds four through seven, a lot of value in those picks. That's the sweet spot of the draft for a lot of organizations. And over the years, it's been the sweet spot of the draft for the Cincinnati Bengals as well. I mean, you have teams that this year in the draft had six fourth-round picks. Six fourth-round picks. The Baltimore Ravens, they messed with everybody's minds in the fourth round. And they did well. And You can do well uh, with rounds four through seven. So let's take a look at, in, in Bengals history, some of the stellar players that they've taken in rounds four through seven. Hmm. Ring of Honor inductee. Ken Riley, pick 135 out of Florida A&M. Ken Riley was a quarterback at Florida A&M. Paul Brown and the Cincinnati Bengal defensive coaches felt like he could make the conversion to the corner position and do it well with his athletic ability and his football intelligence. His football IQ, off the charts. His athletic abilities, stunning. Plus the fact that he he's one of the greatest leaders, one, one of the best team players I've ever been around. I mean, Kenny Riley was always trying to impart nuggets of knowledge to everybody. He'd try to help every single teammate that he could, even guys that were trying to take his job. I mean, this whole thing was make the team better. Kenny Riley, tremendous hands. I mean, he took advantage of every inter every ball thrown his way that could possibly be an interception. He capitalized on it. I can't remember him blowing an interception. And that's why, you know, over over 60 interceptions, the guy's amongst the most in NFL history and should be in the Hall of Fame. He just did not drop picks. Um, plus, the thing I love about him is the way he'd tackle. Anybody that went to high point a ball on him that went airborne, they were going to have their legs taken out from under him, and they were going to do backward somersaults to the turf. And guys would be apprehensive about going airborne with Kenny Riley in the area because they knew that he was going to chop their legs right out from under them. And uh, that was his trademark. And he was just very, very smart. Kenny Riley never broke assignments, just a coach's dream. Every teammate loved him. There's not one person that I know that ever has had a bad thing to say about the Rattler, Ken Riley, unbelievable player. In the seventh round, 163rd pick of his draft, out of Lincoln, Lamar Parrish, Leapin' Lamar. This guy was a freak athlete, had unbelievable length to his arms. He, he was long. He was so fast. He was so quick. He had such an innate ability as a, as a return man. Uh, we're playing the uh, Washington Redskins in Cincinnati at Riverfront Stadium my rookie year, and I'm watching turn a punt over 70 yards for a touchdown, and then uh, pick off Sonny Jurgensen and take that back to the house for an interception. And we win the football game, a close football game, by a score that he, he had, two, def he had a, um, two unconventional scores in. He had a defensive score and a special team score. I mean, Lamar Parrish almost beat the, the Washington Redskins by himself. He had that kind of ability, that kind of innate talent. He was, uh, he was extremely gifted, very flamboyant. He had a seamstress in St. Louis that would make him a new outfit, uh, a new suit, every single game on a road trip and in home games. I mean, he was flashy, um, but he, he, he backed it up. Kenny, uh, Kenny Riley and Lamar Parrish, what a tandem at the cornerback position uh, the Cincinnati Bengals enjoyed. Also, seventh-round pick out of North Carolina Central, 187th pick of his draft, Lewis Breeden. How about that? Three of the best cornerbacks in franchise history. Lewis Breeden was a great baseball player. Uh, Lewis, Lewis probably, he probably could have played Major League Baseball. I mean, he was unbelievable center field. They said he could hit at tremendous speed, but he was an outstanding football player as well. Lewis Breeden just could close on receivers. You know, once he read a route and closed on it, he was bringing it. He was coming with full force. And uh, he'd separate you from the football. 
He's really, really physical, really, really sound tackler, tough guy, played through pain, played through injury, total team player. Lewis Breeden was outstanding on the edge at the cornerback position. And um, I know that uh, Dick LeBeau had a tremendous amount of respect for Lewis Breeden as he did for Dick LeBeau. They had a dynamic relationship that developed Lewis's career big time. Another seventh rounder, a UCLA Bruin, the 168th pick of the draft. What were people thinking? Max Montoya. I'll drink to that. Max Montoya, tremendous football player. Just big, barrel-chested, quick. I mean, had his get-off at the line of scrimmage out of his stance was incredible. Five, 10-yard areas. He was as fast as it was in the National Football League. He'd get out and pull on much smaller people. And they'd try to uh, avoid him in space. He'd redirect his body and, and get contact on him, take him to the ground. Just an outstanding football player every way you could be. In the running game, pass protection. You know, I, if, if Max Montour, forget about a sack. He didn't give up sacks. If he gave up a pressure, everybody was stunned. It was like, what? That doesn't happen. He was an eraser inside. Max Montoya eliminated people. Really good players he eliminated. Pro Bowl player himself. Just an, a great, great player, uh, great, great teammate, and played for a long time. Max Montoya, Maxi was the man. Seventh round, Oregon State. 204th pick of the draft, TJ Hushmanzada. They drafted Chad Johnson in the second round, TJ Hushmanzada in the seventh round the same year, teammates out of Oregon State, and both of them impacted the franchise. TJ Hushmanzada was an, another football savant, really, really keen understanding of the game of football, outstanding football IQ, and that he used that to his benefit big time. And as a result of that, the coaches – Utilized him quite a bit too. Would, would use him in, in in different ways and different ty types of route combinations. And uh, T.J. Hushmanzada never made mistakes, and he could correct other people, <laughs> and on the football field and, and help them not make mistakes. He was kind of like a coach in the field, and not surprised that he's so involved in football the way he is now. He's uh, he's working with wide receivers. He's doing some broadcast work. He's coached. He's done a lot of things in the game of football. Uh, T.J. Hushmanzada is uh, has helped a lot of a lot of players for a lot of years develop their skill set and be able to play at the highest level they possibly can play, and that's what he did. And uh, he had the inner drive to get that done. He took coaching very very well, and he he understood what they were trying to do and and how they were trying to help him. And he parlayed that uh, here later in his career as well. Joe Walter. Big Texan, seventh round selection, 181st pick out of Texas Tech. Joe Walter was, when, when he came to Cincinnati as a seventh round pick, I'm like, what? This, this guy had really good feet, long arms, powerful hands, big, strong hands. When Joe, you know, he had really good footwork to put himself in position. Once he got his hands inside the framework of your body and, and controlled you, he had control of you. I mean, it was like bear claws. Uh, Joe Walter was a tremendous football player for the Cincinnati Bengals. You know, you had Anthony Munoz and Joe Walter as offensive tackles in uh, the year the Bengals went to Super Bowl 23 in 1988. That was as good a tandem as there was in the league. I mean, Joe Walter uh, against Reggie White, that, that, was, that was football for me. I mean, I, I was like, I, I got to watch this matchup. And there was a heck of a matchup going on between Joe Walter and Reggie White that day when the, the Bengals played the Philadelphia Eagles. And Joe Walter more than held his own, I can tell you that. And at that point, I'm like, wow, big Joe now. And this, this guy's a player. Total team player, again, uh, equally proficient in the run game and, and, and in pass protection. Um, big Texan, good people. Geno Atkins. How about this pick? I mean, you know, Atkins, potential Hall of Famer, should be Hall of Famer, fourth round, 120th pick, the draft coming out of Georgia. They were worried about 
Gino's size, you know, only being maybe a skosh over six feet tall. Uh, but man, you talk about first step quickness, explosion, uh, just low center of gravity, uh, getting under your pads, unbelievable strength, but it was functional football strength, not just weight room strength. It was functional football strength. Gino Atkins was a beast. I mean, you know, he, you didn't single block Geno Atkins. Geno Atkins was always drawing double team attention and just a very special football player um, and just uh, would sacrifice for the betterment of the football team. Anything that, that Geno Atkins had to do to help his defensive uh, football team win and therefore the football team itself in its entirety win, he was all about just a really, really unbelievably proficient football player. And as an interior Offensive lineman got a lot of respect for what Geno Atkins was all about. And, and it was on an every snap basis. He would bring it every single snap. Great player. And then another great player out of Michigan State, fourth rounder, 123rd selection in his draft, Domata Pecco. Big Domata. You know, it's like, he just, he was like, he would engulf the interior of the offensive line. He would consume double teams. He would consume triple teams. Just a, a big-bodied uh, defensive lineman that had great lateral movement skills. Very, very difficult to get him off his feet. It was an upset when Domata Pecco was on the ground. That didn't happen very often. Tremendous balance, tremendous football instincts. Uh, just a, you know another great leader of his football team. Everybody gravitated toward Domata Pecco um, when when he when he spoke. Everybody on the team knew it was important, and they were going to listen to what Domata Pecco had to say. And played a long time in the National Football League, and, and and took care of himself and took care of his teammates. There's no two ways about it. They were very very blessed uh, to be able to select the Bengals. Were very very blessed to be able to select two defensive tackles of this caliber at 120 and 123 selections of their respective drafts, two fourth round picks that were incredible value. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.